What will we arrest him for? We'll find something. <laughs> oh. I heard him say he was going to kill the Emperor! He uses dark magic to win over Simpleton! He said he would tear down God's temple and build it again in three days! Don't you have an answer to what these men are testifying against you? Tell us! Are you the Messiah, the Son of God? Yes, I am. Soon you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right side of God, all-powerful, and coming on the clouds of heaven. <laughs> this man claims to be God! We don't need any more witnesses! You've heard what he said! What do you think? He is guilty and deserves to die! It can't be. It can't be! You... You're a friend of his, aren't you? You were with him. I don't know what you mean. But you were. This man was with Jesus. I don't even know the man. You are one of them. You can tell by your accent. I'm not lying. I don't know him. My God! My God! Why have you deserted me? Sinners, you are all welcome. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord! I said it to the son of David! <laughs> Follow me, and from now on you will bring in people instead of fish. Welcome to Sunday Live and may I wish you all a very happy Easter. It's great to be here with you and as you can see I'm washing my car and I'll be washing Leanne's car later and no, 
I don't do it as a, as a job. It's that time of year, isn't it? It's spring and we all start uh, sort of doing those spring cleaning jobs and one of them is the car because of course they get a bit muddy over Christmas. But anyway, I do hope you enjoyed that, uh, that opening uh, video. It's the second part to the one I played last week and uh, I just love the, the end of it. And yes, it's aimed at that younger generation, but you know, I'm sure we've all uh, really enjoyed it. But let's just ask God's blessing uh, on our time. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for Easter and all that it reminds us of, that it reminds us that your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, has, yes, arisen from the dead. And bless our time now in your holy name. Amen. Well, as I say, it's great to have you here. Uh, and we're going to have a, a very Eastery, uh, sort of rousing song in a minute, uh, which is called Christ the Lord uh, is Risen Today, because of course uh, it's Easter, and that's what we're, we're thinking about. We're gonna have our Bible reading, which is taken from John uh, chapter uh, 20 and verses 1 to 18 uh, and uh, Sarah and Peter Jackson they're going to, to read that to us and they do it really really well now normally you'll have the speaker come after that but I'm going to show a video straight afterwards as soon as, soon as they're finished you're literally finished as soon as I finish as soon as they finish get my words right uh, it will go straight into a video and it's called um, you know uh, so sorry, sorry you know you know his name. Sorry, I couldn't read my own handwriting there. It's terrible, wouldn't it? I'm not going to re-record this. So yes, you know his name. It's a really good little video. And then I'll suddenly pop up because uh, I'm doing uh, the talk uh, today. So let's uh, enjoy this uh, particular song. I think it's a really good one. Uh, I enjoyed listening to it uh, when I actually downloaded it. And it's, as I say, it's called Christ the Lord is Risen Today. i 
morning on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, I came to the tomb and I saw that the stone was moved away from the entrance. I ran home at once to Simon Peter and John, the disciple Jesus loved. Gasping for breath, I cried out. They took the master from the tomb. We don't know where they've put him. John and I left immediately for the tomb. We ran neck and neck. John got to the tomb first, outrunning me. Stooping to look in, he saw the pieces of linen cloth lying there, but he didn't go in. I arrived just after him and entered the tomb. I could see the linen cloths lying there and the special cloth used to cover his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but separate, neatly folded by itself. It was only then that John, who had been waiting by the entrance, went into the tomb. He took one look at the evidence and believed. In that startling moment, none of us yet knew from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. After a few minutes, John and I returned home. I stood outside the tomb weeping. As I wept, I knelt to look into the tomb and I saw two angels sitting there dressed in white, one at the head, the other at the foot of where Jesus' body had been laid. One of them said to me, woman, why do you weep? They took my master, I sobbed. I don't know where they put him. After I said this, I turned away and I saw Jesus standing there. But at first I didn't recognize him. Jesus spoke to me, woman, why do you weep? Who are you looking for? I was thinking that he was the gardener. Sir, I said, if you took him, tell me where you put him so I can care for him. Jesus spoke gently to me, Mary. Turning quickly to face him, I exclaimed, Rabboni, master, it is you. And I grabbed his cloak. Jesus whispered gently, don't cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go to my brothers and tell them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, my God and your God. Mary had stayed at the tomb after John and I had left, but only a little while after we had been back, she came rushing through the door. I saw the master, she shouted, and she told us everything he said to her. You know his name. Of course you do. Who am I talking about? I'll give you a clue. Arguably the most influential person who ever lived on earth. We even talk and question what happened at his birth. In his adulthood he was followed, his fan base had kept growing. In fact it still does and shows no signs of slowing. And though he walked earth years ago, they say he's alive today. That resurrection power means he is here to stay. But who am I talking about? Have you figured it out? For me, he's someone I can't live without. For others, he seems irrelevant. Some think he's not real. Then there are millions like me who think he's kind of a big deal. You know his name. I'm sure you do, even as just a curse. Or you might be more informed of him and can quote him chapter and verse. Others may know his name for being a religious weirdo. Some have no time for him. To them, he's an absolute zero. But what does this guy say about himself to folks like you and me? For the answer to that question, we need to hit a library. If we open the Bible, he's the main aim. We see him as well as lots of descriptions that come into frame. His name, I know you know it. His name is Jesus. Do you know him? Yes, his name is Jesus. But what's the definition? It means God saves. His name gives us his mission. You may think his surname's Christ, that's a usual misunderstanding, but it means he's the anointed one. It's not a surname, it's branding. He's the Messiah, God's promised king. Delivering God's promises is what he would bring. They also call him master, lord and teacher, an importer of wisdom and a most excellent preacher. You know his name, I hope you see. All these titles are to help you and to help me. They open our eyes to who he truly is we don't need enough knowledge to win a quiz. He wants you to know him. That's what he came to show everyone. To tell you, you matter. You're cared for. A loved one. Son of God. Son of man. Those are two more titles to add. Fully God, fully man. Sent to us by his heavenly dad. Did you know he knows your name? He really does care. And this is the God to whom none shall compare. So you know his name, but 
Do you know him? The Bible says if not, your eternity will be grim. So make the choice now while you still have the time. That's the reason why I share this in rhyme. To get your attention and so you know Jesus. He knows your name. He really does see us. So as you listen, what do you think? Of this message that shows no signs of going extinct? The choice isn't did Jesus exist? History backs that up. The question is who he was and what he means to us. Actually, we're told he comes back to life, so it shouldn't be who he was, but who he is. So what conclusion do you come to after all your analysis? However you know his name, think of what his names teach us. Hopefully they give us all something worthy to discuss. Jesus is real. You know his name, but remember he knows yours also. This is the one who I trust and the one that calls you to follow. Who he was and what he means to us. I hope you found that short video interesting and helpful and maybe even challenging. But in it, those words were said, what he was and what he means to us. They're really uh, good uh, questions. Of course, it clarifies in the video in saying that perhaps our language shouldn't be what he meant to us. It's perhaps what he means to us now because, of course, we as Christians believe that Jesus Christ is actually alive. But what right do we as Christians or believers and followers in Jesus have to say uh, that he rose again from the dead, that he is alive? You know, over the years, um, when I used to work up in the past, when I used to work for many years in the building industry, people would often say to me, you know, oh, come on, you know, we can perhaps believe that Jesus existed, but ro risen again from the dead? It's just taking it too far. Fairies at the end of the garden kind of thing. Gnomes come alive at night. Your toys really do come alive. All that kind of fantasy sort of stuff that's just just pie uh, in the sky. And people have often uh, said that to me even afterwards when they found out that I was a vicar, etc., etc. For many people, it's a, a leap too far, isn't it? To, to believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. So what right uh, do we have to say that Jesus Christ is alive, that he is God's son, and that we can find hope and salvation in him? I think uh, that video went a long way, actually, in helping us to explore <coughs> that idea. But for me, with the time I have this morning, there's just two sort of things, really, that I kind of I want to unpack. And, and in the video, it did kind of refer very briefly to one element where we can actually turn to for, I suppose you could say, evidence uh, that the resurrection actually happened. It said in the video that there is historical evidence it's accepted that Jesus was a historical person that he actually lived and that is true there is more apparently evidence to the existence of Jesus Christ than King Henry VIII which is pretty astounding and we have no problem uh, with accepting actually uh, King Henry VIII existed there is so much manuscriptural evidence I mean it's in the thousands 20,000 30 more and they're constantly unearthing uh, this kind of archaeological evidence, if you want to put it that way, as to uh, the existence uh, of Jesus Christ. In fact, any serious historian will tell you that actually, yes, Jesus Christ was a real person. He really did live 2,000 years ago, and you don't have to believe me, you can check it out for yourself. But whatever sources you go to, go to serious and independent uh, uh, sources there's plenty of people out there that will say all kinds of things about Jesus but with very very little evidence it's just kind of sort of you know it's kind of thing that the media like to get hold of or you like to make films out of out of etc etc the real evidence is perhaps is a little bit a little bit boring I don't know but there is so much uh, evidence out there uh, to the fact that Jesus Christ was an historical person that he really really did exist you cannot deny that it is an historical fact. So what are the Gospels then? Well, they're simply eyewitness accounts of events that actually happened 2,000 years ago. So these 
uh, were events that happened, Jesus existed. So what do we make of all these eyewitness accounts? Well, we look at them exactly as that. We have the Gospel of Mark, we have the Gospel of Luke, John uh, uh, and Matthew, etc. Uh, and they really, I suppose, are eyewitness accounts of events uh, that happened uh, in their lives when they met you. Because Jesus didn't write anything down. It was all written actually uh, about him. And so these are accounts of events uh, that happened. So, OK, fair enough. He existed. He lived. But really, did he do all these miracles? And did he really rise uh, again uh, from the dead? Now, I'm not going to go into all the miracles and stuff like that, because that's perhaps for another time. Our big question is, can we uh, believe or trust these eyewitness accounts, which we accept are historical, as true eyewitness accounts of things that happened? Did they really witness Jesus Christ coming back to life? Now we can accept that they actually saw him dying because crucifixion was a commonplace thing that happened in the time in that time 2000 years ago, as horrific uh, as that was. But the claim that he came back to life that's that's a real hard one to for many people to accept but when you start to unpack the stories and just think about the events actually it starts to become very uh, very believable the first thing you have to uh, understand that when jesus christ rose from the dead he didn't just appear once to one or two people he actually appeared to 500 people and not all at once he appeared over a period of quite a few weeks in different locations at different times uh, in the day. So just to say that people were in a frenzy or they were tired or they were just whatever, or they been had too much to drink, doesn't kind of hold up because these um, sort of uh, resurrection appearances were all uh, over the place. For example, the road to, uh, to Emmaus. Jesus actually walked with these people for quite a while until he actually revealed himself to them. So he was actually with them uh, for quite a while. Uh, you know, hallucinations don't uh, last that long. And what about when he appeared to them uh, in that room, showing them, you know, his hands and his feet and his head and his side. And, and he said, I'm not a ghost. Give me something uh, to eat. And he actually ate fish right uh, in front of him. In our Bible reading, uh, uh, that was read to us today. We have uh, uh, eyewitness accounts. It's by Mary and Peter, who also uh, saw these events. So there are so many people that actually saw uh, what actually happened to Jesus. So there was a lot of eyewitness uh, evidence to this. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because we could spend a lot of time. But the other thing I think that's very, very actually um, important is that You've got to take everything into context. Remember, OK, that Jesus had been arrested. He'd been flogged, betrayed by literally everybody. The only disciple that remained to the end was John. And he was with Mary uh, and Mary's uh, Jesus's mother. Um, but everybody else had run away. In fact, that story I referred to on the road to they, they, they were they were going, they were leaving. They'd even heard that Jesus had risen from the dead and they just didn't want to know. They, they were abandoning, as it were, the ship. Everybody had run away. Peter had denied Jesus Christ when he was faced, you know, with, uh, you know, being found out that he was one of one of Jesus's disciples. So they were gone. So what changed everything? Because literally overnight, within a few uh, weeks, these uh, these these men and these women who were running away suddenly changed. In fact, were even willing to give their own lives. And if you read uh, in the Acts of the Apostles, in those first few chapters of the Acts, you will see accounts of how Christians get killed and stoned and so on. So why why would they do that if it was a complete and utter lie? All the disciples, I think, I believe, except for John, who was on Patmos. You know, they all died for the faith. So why would you do that? You know, I wouldn't die for a lie. Why would anybody want to do that? One of the greatest evidences, I guess, is that the change in the disciples that happened so, so quickly. Now, of course, we could continue to think uh, 
uh, about uh, the resurrection and, and the, the things that happen all around that story and we don't actually have time but there's one other thing that I just want to draw uh, our attention to when it comes to the resurrection and that's how it's changed the world you know when Jesus said that when he was going to when he came into um, Jerusalem on the donkey uh, he talked about his death and he would said that once he has been raised up on that cross that all the world would be drawn uh, to himself and that became true I have no idea how many people over the last 2,000 years have put their faith in uh, and trust in Jesus Christ. But I know it numbers in the billions here uh, on our planet Earth at this moment in time, in 2001. Billions of people believe in Jesus Christ and they believe that he has risen from the dead and they believe that they have a living relationship with him even today. Now that's huge. I know you might not think it's huge, but that is a real big thing that for 2000 years, people have said that they have a relationship with Jesus and that they have met the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Now you can say what you like about that, but that is phenomenal. And I myself, who am a Christian, I believe that I have a real and living relationship with Jesus Christ. That's amazing. But of course, I could be here for hours talking about what I believe is the evidence uh, for the risen Jesus Christ. But the truth is, it really does come down to faith. I was talking to someone just the other day about faith uh, and Christianity and uh, believing in evolution, being an atheist. And for me, there's just as much faith in that. It's trusting in science. And don't get me wrong, I love science. I think science is amazing. Uh, and, and we are discovering so much about our planet and, and our universe. It's, it's brilliant, but it doesn't answer everything. You know, it can tell you how things work, but it can't tell you why. It can't tell you why we exist. You know, why are we here? And I believe that we were created uh, by God. I believe in a divine being called God. And I'm not going to hide away from that word, God. I believe in a God and I believe that Jesus Christ was his son uh, who came to this earth to die on the cross because he loves me. Which brings me to my second point and my final point, really. Just the other day I was talking to someone and they said to me, look, come on in. This is all great, you know, Christianity and believing in God and, you know, having your comfort blanket and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, there's lots of religions in the world. Half of them causes wars, half of them causes a lot of problems. And they might all have different names, but they're kind of the same. In the end, they all believe in a God or a divine being. They just express it in a different way. So what makes you have any right to say that Jesus is unique or any different, really, than all these other faiths? They kind of lead, all lead to God in their own way. And that's a good point. It's a great question to ask. All I would say is that in the Bible, Jesus said, that the only way to God is through him. I believe in Jesus Christ because, or I'm a Christian uh, above all other faiths, and I, please, I've got nothing against other faiths. I'm not trying to preach against them or anything like that. But I am a believer in Jesus Christ quite simply because of Easter. You know, we celebrate Easter every year, but Easter tells us why Jesus came. Jesus came to die upon the cross because he loves me and he loves you. And he longs for a living and real relationship, which is what I was talking about uh, just a moment ago. But he knew that there was something between us and God and himself. And it's called, we call it sin, but it's really just in its simple form, rebellion. You see, the Bible says no one is perfect. I am not perfect. I'm not holy. There's no way I can get to heaven by my own abilities. I'll fail every single time. In fact, what's the point in me trying to follow any other religion in the world? Because they demand me to do all kinds of things for my salvation, to get saved. And there's no way I'm ever going to be able to do that because I'm not perfect and I make mistakes uh, all the time. But the reason why I'm a Christian is because that work has been done for me upon the cross. When Jesus stretched out his arms, and died on the cross at Calvary, the price of sin was paid. 
and that all I had to simply do was put my faith and trust in Jesus by saying, come into my heart and saying, I, I'm not perfect, forgive me and help me to be better and seek and I seek to try to follow him. And even though I claim to be a Christian and even though I claim to be saved and even though I claim to be forgiven, I still fail. I still make mistakes because I cannot save myself. No one can. Only person that can save us, I believe, as a Christian, is Jesus Christ because he did what he did on that cross. And he did it because he loves us. The Bible says there's no greater love than that, that someone gives their life for another. And that is exactly what Jesus Christ did for you and for me. That is the power of the cross. That is the power of Easter. And it's the power that can change mine and your lives. That's why I'm a vicar. I'm not a vicar because I want to uphold an institution or whatever I might be doing. I'm a vicar or uh, doing what I do because I passionately believe that this Christian message is such an important message that everyone uh, should hear the good news that Jesus Christ died on the cross because he loves you. And on the third day, he rose again, victorious over death. And as I finish, I had two points, but there's one more. And actually, you tell me of any uh, religion where their God, their saviour is actually still alive, is risen and interacts in a real way. I don't know of any, maybe I'm wrong. Well, God bless and uh, have a great Easter. Well, I had to do a bit of editing there because I forgot actually what the next hymn uh, was, uh, which is actually how deep the fathers uh, love. Uh, and we're going to have that uh, song uh, in a moment. Uh, and after that, I've, uh, I've sort of, I'm going to read something to you. And it's actually called um, Because Jesus uh, Lives. You won't actually see me. I'm going to put scenery up and all that kind of lovely stuff uh, behind, uh, behind the voice, as it were. So you just hear my voice and see lovely scenery. But I think the words are, are really, uh, really powerful. But before that happens, let's just uh, take a short moment to, to, to pray. Let's just pray. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this amazing story uh, of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We just thank you that he was willing to go and die upon that cross for me. And that on the third day, he rose again victorious from death. I just pray now, Lord, that you'll give us all that strength that we need in these coming weeks. Oh Lord, it's been tough uh, during this pandemic. The Lord Easter comes and reminds us of your love for us, but also reminds us of resurrection and new life. And we pray in the coming weeks and the coming months that we will come out of this pandemic and that life will return, that festivals will return. The ability to be able to go and have physical, real fellowship uh, with people to enjoy one another's company at the pub or uh, at, a, at a restaurant or at a cafe. Lord, we just pray that as this, as this year progresses, that new life will return. But as it returns, help us to be reminded of the new life that you can bring to each one of us. And so I do pray uh, for those who don't know you this day. If you're listening to this today, I just pray that God will be speaking into your heart. I pray that you will open your heart and your mind to Jesus Christ so that you can find his power for your life and so Lord I just bring before you right now uh, those who perhaps are feeling low those who are struggling with the things of this life those who are unwell those who have lost loved ones Lord we just offer them to you now we pray Lord that they will also feel your resurrection power upon their lives and so God, come now and bless uh, each one of us. Help us be refreshed during this time of Easter. Help us go from this place anew so that we can go out and proclaim that good news, that Jesus is alive. Amen. So let's uh, sing together. 
how deep the Father's love, because that, these words really do speak about the love that the Father has for us in and through his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because Jesus lives. Because Jesus lives, you and I can be saved by the grace of God. Because he lives, we can have our sins washed away forever. Because he lives, we can go to heaven when we leave this world. Because he lives, the grave has no power over those who believe. Because he lives, eternal life is our present possession. Because he lives, one day we too will live with him in that heavenly city. Because he lives, I'll never have to take a step this, in this world alone. Because he lives, there is hope, there is help, and there is a home awaiting us in eternity. Because he lives, I am alive. Because he lives, my sins have been removed as far as the east is from the west because he lives my name is written in the lamb's book of life because he lives god is my father because he lives sin 
has no dominion over me. Because he lives, I am saved forever. I do hope you enjoyed uh, Sunday Live uh, and all the different things that have been going on uh, during this service. And again, I want to wish you all a very uh, happy Easter and do enjoy your bank ho holiday uh, Monday. I think it's going to be a bit cold, but let's just hope uh, the weather is quite sunny and we can get out and meet family and, and friends now that the restrictions are uh, just slightly even more uh, relaxed, which is great. So I'm not looking forward to sitting in the garden freezing cold. I think I'll have to take a blanket uh, with me. Anyway, I want to wish you uh, all well. We have one more uh, song for Sunday Live which is when I survey the Wondrous Cross and as you can see I've now uh, finished uh, cleaning both cars uh, and can I just say to anybody you know please don't park your car uh, under a tree because birds tend to like to poo all over it and I discovered that the birds locally I think they must be eating something very strange because trying to get that off was like trying to remove concrete. Anyway all done, enough of my woes. So let's ask for God's blessing as we go our separate ways. May God's love and blessing be upon each one of you. May you know the power of the risen Saviour in all of your days and your lives. I ask this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So go in peace and love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. And so let's finish with when I survey the wondrous cross, what better hymn uh, to finish an Easter Sunday live with.
In my wrestling and in my doubts In my failures you won't walk out Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, You are the peace in my troubled sea Silence you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Whoa, You are the peace in my troubled sea My lighthouse, my Show sure.